Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. Hello guys, uh, welcome to Play by Play podcast. My name is Patrick Bergman and we have... Ahmed Ibrahim. Today's topic session is Google getting to know me, grilling me, put me on the spot, where, why I am, where I am, what could have done better, etc, etc. Exactly. So following what you said, tell us, who is Ahmed? Okay, uh, so... Ahmed, basically a Somali guy, 26 years old. Um, always had an aspiration to play pro and almost made a pro, like full time, being in an academy, Chamir and Marcus Field. Um, and then obviously, Marcus Field, as you know, guys, back then when they were in um, League Two, they went bust. Now, uh, which basically means the club went bankrupt and then decided to go to university, play non league like everyone else in the trenches, team balls over my head, game in, game out, bouncing teams. Um, while I was in union studying physiotherapy on SNC, got my qualification. Um, I tried playing abroad as well. I like abroad to Spain, um, tries for Finland, tries for um Bosnia, them type of countries. Um and now we're here, man. I've got my own personal business, Mumbai Elite. I do a lot of physio helping academy guys, guys like you guys trying to aspire to be pro. And uh, yeah, we have this podcast, play by play podcast, co host which your boy, Patrick Bergman. I will just add that you are based in Liverpool in England, but uh-huh. how did you come to England? What's your story? Are you originally from England? Well, well do you want to know the, uh, the the story we tell to the government or the real story? The real, the, the rough one, the one with the boat. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, Grew up in, obviously born in Somalia and uh, moved to Middle East. Uh, lived in like Saudi, different countries and different cities in Saudi. Um, while we were in Saudi, we were still we were visiting Bahrain, we were visiting different countries as well. And then um, we moved back to Africa. Um, because obviously we couldn't stay in Saudi anymore. And then um, my dad had a business in the UK. He's like, yeah, go back to Africa. We'll, uh, I'll try and bring you guys back to the UK. Um, and then basically what happened, we stayed in Africa thinking we're going to stay there for a few weeks, but guess how long we stayed there, bro? Mm-hmm. Nine months. Oh, I was more or less out of school for ages. Um, we were basically living in the jungle I swear to God and then obviously you know the waterfall story mm. <laughs> mm. and then obviously um, there's so many stories in Africa um, and I came here when I was like 9, 10 I obviously speaking a little English and then um, that's when I discovered football at such a late age Um in school um, I've always been athletic I've always been quick I've always been fit so I'm thinking just kick a ball and run um, but yeah that's where my love of the game started um, because our, our school kept run, winning um, the national um, our school kept winning the like the city competition, like we we won so many tournaments in the city, and um, my first coach 
he was a Liverpool legend. Howard Gale, first black player to ever let represent and play for Liverpool. So Howard Gale was my first ever coach, like football coach ever. Um, and yeah, he hated me. I'm not gonna lie. Hmm. He's like, you're bad, you're rubbish, man. He was like my first coach car to experience. Um, but me and him always we always had like tough love relationship. And um, we're still we're still cool and that when I see him in the streets. Um but yeah, that's how it all started. And uh, why did you stick to football? Why uh, are you playing it? What's your reason behind? Um because my life has been so hectic and chaos. Um obviously like changing countries. One minute you're thinking you're staying, one minute you think you're going. Um, football is the only thing that made me feel welcome, does that make sense? Mm. It made me feel at home, does that make sense? It made me feel like the more I give to it, the more I'll get back sometimes, do you know what I mean? Mm. In terms of enjoyment, in terms of effort, in terms of like, And we were, we were just winning tournaments, but I've never had that like feeling from my childhood, like up until I was 10. And we were winning tournament, tournament, and that's, that's the first place where I felt I felt wanted and appreciated, if that makes sense. Mm, yeah. This, despite the tough love, despite I still seen the rewards and the efforts of my hard work, but I didn't see it anywhere else. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Mm, yeah. Um, and I don't. I I looking back, I understand like what why my family did what they did. Do you know what I mean? I understand it, but there's certain elements where I didn't. I felt neglected. If that makes sense. Mm. But I felt like football filled up that gap that I needed. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. There is uh, there is like one one thing that I always say to people is that if you do good in football, it reflects on your life, and that's that's like in one way addicting. But on the other hand, it's uh, it's it's like football is your guiding hand, it just walks you mm. through the life. Mm. It's like my lighthouse. That's how that's how I look at it. Um, because if I, for example. Um, like you said to me, Patrick, this week, oh, you sound so sick. Blah, blah. Like yesterday, I had a trial game and I didn't play the best, to be honest. We like we won. I created one. I got one assist, but generally speaking, I had one of the worst games in my life. And I'm like, okay, like you say, football is your life because if you didn't prepare properly, if you didn't rest properly, if you didn't sleep properly, and you're not feeling well, blah blah, you you can't. Do you know what I mean it gives you like a guidance that like, this is where you're messing up in life. This is where they, this is why you can't perform optimally in life because in real life you're doing this, this, and this. So like like it's my reference point in life, if that makes sense. So mm. that's why like if I, I feel like if I didn't have that. Oh this is why it's so important, guys, to like have something where you're getting I call it G check. If you don't have something to G check you and guide you in terms of you're doing something where you have to perform optimally mentally physically psychologically and emotionally in order to perform if you don't have something to like keep you in check then you're just going to be living life in autopilot and that's why i've always kept football in my life where it be playing Amateur, whether it be playing semi pro, whatever level, I've always kept it in my life because I'm like, oh, I feel lost there. I'm off. And then me reflecting and be like, oh, this is what I've done this week. Oh, yeah, I need to fix up type of thing. I'll be like, wow, it's the best time I've had. It's the best performance. Oh, yeah, leading up to it, sleeping properly. I was doing this, doing that, didn't have any stress at home. Blah, 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 blah. Boom. Like it gives you like that guidance. So I feel like um football was my guidance when I didn't have any growing up. So what's your biggest achievement and the biggest challenge that you overcame? 
um, in football or like life? In general. Um, but like, like I said, because I've always been behind. I've always had an underdog story, if that makes sense. I started football late, came to this country late. I was I was already one year, two years behind in terms of education, in terms of like everything. Because I was in Africa for nine months. I was already like like I, I didn't speak the language properly. I didn't know my whereabouts. I never had stability. I've always been the underdog, if that makes sense. So I feel like despite all the negativity, I never settled into victim like victimhood mentality. I always like bring it on. Do you know what I mean? That's always been my mindset. And that's in a sense, it makes me like it makes me a psycho. Like do you know what I mean? Like so bleep test, I'm like completely dead. I don't care. I don't care if my heart is burning, um my legs are burning, I'm completing it. Do you know what I mean? It, that that's I think that's where it came from. I've always had an unduck story, like people doubt me, I'm like, I'll show you. Like I feel like that's where my mindset and that's where my achievement comes from in life, where English is not my first language, yet I still passed uni, university. Um, I almost got kicked out of university. That's something a lot of people don't know. I still overcome it and I still got my degree. Um, so many coaches said, you're not good enough, blah, blah, blah. Still went to get into academy. Still managed to get a one-year deal. Do you know what I mean? Like, like I've always like like people not been there for me or my parents never ever watched me. But like, I still try to be my number one biggest fan, do you know what I mean? Mm. Like I feel like that's my achievement is not to sound egotistical, but my achievement is genuinely myself, if that makes sense. Mm. But in a sense, and I'm like because of that, I'm always hungry for more. And I'm always like, what's next, what's next, what's next? Um, and I feel like that's my sense of achievement because I'm in a battle with myself and myself only. Whereas a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I need to do that, do, do, do. which is good. But in my opinion, like I'm in my own lane and I'm in my own battle every single day. Can I improve? Yeah. Can I do better? Yeah. Is there something that I need to still achieve? Yeah. But it's an ongoing process. Why are you called Ferdi? Everyone wants to know that. Um. So, <laughs> so this is how me and Patrick met, guys. So, um, so there's a guy that um who I was a good friend with um growing up. Like not a good friend with, but like um, do you know when football you know people. Do you know what I mean? Like you play against them in academy or whatever. Do you know what I mean? You just know them, you know. There's some guy called Anthony Jedi, Anthony uh, Robinson, plays for Fulham at the moment, Premier League, left back, represents for USA national team. So he grew up in Liverpool, he was in Evan Academy, blah, blah. So he, me, everyone that plays football know each other, like schoolboys, England schoolboys, them type of stuff, like Liverpool schoolboys. Um, his father, um, Tony Robinson, aka Marlon Robinson, that's his real name. But everyone calls him Tony. Um, yeah, you know now. Didn't know, <laughs> right, didn't know that, right? Didn't know that Marlon. If we call really? him Marlon, he's gonna flip. Yeah. Excuse me. Really? Wow. Yeah. Only my wife calls me that. Um. But yeah. Um. So yeah. So he used to run an agency. Um, and camps where he gets unsigned players to become signed in academy or get them from grassroots to somewhere basically. Um, so he was doing this program, right? And um, that's where I met Patrick. He came from Norway to Liverpool. Um, I I I don't know if Tony gave everyone a name for an alter ego or something, but you kept giving players based on their their position 
that gave, kept giving players names of current professional players based on their position, based on their style of play, and based on their stature and looks. For some reason, I got Rio Ferdinand. And obviously, no one wanted to call me Rio. I went mean, Ferdinand. And then, but obviously, when he's coaching that, you're not going to go, Ferdinand! They just said, Ferdy. Ferdy, Ferdy, Ferdy. And it just stuck since then. Because no one can pronounce my name properly. Ahmed, or they call Armhead, or whatever. Arm and Head, Ahmed. I'm thinking, just call me Ferdy, I can't be asked. Um, because if they call me Aki, they just call me Purple Aki. So I was like, I'm not doing that. Uh, so um, yeah, so that's where the nickname came from, Ferdy, you know, from that from one of my first agents that I had. Um, and yeah, and then for some reason, Patrick, you stuck with it, and then you ran with it. So now everyone calls me Ferdy. Yeah, I'm even like his promoter. I'm promoting his his nickname. I think it's cool, <laughs> Ferdy. Oh, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Got named after exercises, got named after everything. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. Well, yeah, that's essentially where the name came from, fairly. But uh, clarify to everyone, how did you meet Patrick, aka me? What's your story? So, so I've known Tony for like since I was what, 15, 16. I met Patrick, yeah, 19. 1920. There we are. Yeah, 1920. Pre-COVID. I think that's when I met you. Pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, yeah. 2021. Okay. Mm-hmm. 2019? Um, no. 2019. 2019? 2018. Yeah, Pre-COVID. 2018. I think summer yeah. of 2018. Okay. Okay. Um, that's when I met you. You came in one of the camps. And you came like this, bro. Big timer. He came in like this, bro. Six foot six, but no kid in the world, bro. Yeah. Short. Nice and short. Top, nice and tight. Yeah. I'm thinking the only thing this guy is missing is a fat earring. That's the only thing he was missing that day, bro. <laughs> He's shining. Look at this guy. Man's playing... I was doing stuff always playing it. And I'm thinking, who the hell is this guy? Who does he think he is? And then all oh, the lads didn't like it because scousers, they don't like that stuff, you know? Mm. They like... Um, posh I boys. Don't know, like, they like rough. Ah, they don't like posh yeah. boys. Yeah, okay. you came across rough. posh boy. Okay. Yeah? yeah. You came like a, as a, like, a, you call it snobby. Snobby. You came across snobby. You know, you peasant. That's how you came across, right? Yeah. Mm. And then you hated it because people were going in tackles rough with you. Um, and then you was like, yo, uh, to me and Adrian, because you thought me and Adrian, based on looks, <laughs> I've, I'm one of the best players. That's what you said to, to me in terms of like, like physique, in terms of like athleticism, blah, blah. You came towards us. And you're like, yo, my name is Patrick. Is that what your nick, nick, nickname you're going to get given? you like, you know. And then you got given Van Dyke. I was like, oh, Van Dyke now, yeah. And uh, that's your nickname, Van Dyke. And you're like, nah, Ben White's better. <laughs> I'm like, who the hell is Ben White? Because Ben White wasn't really playing back in the 10 days. Ago. Look him up, he's a new, new upcoming guy. And he ended up being the new upcoming guy. I mean, I'm telling you that, Ben White. It's Ben White, and you know, like, yeah, Ben White's better than Van Dijk. And then, like, Tony was fuming and like, you know nothing about football. I don't remember it, though. But yeah, um, that's how we met. And then, next thing we know, we walk to the bus stop. I see him there. So, yeah, you're going there. I'm like, yeah, I'm going there. And he goes, yeah, okay. And then we get the bus. And then next thing you know, that's the rest is history. And I realised... You live in Wavertree, next to me. Mm. And then, that's his history, bro. And then, yeah. literally five minute walk away from me, and then we then the training together. At best, you was my client. I remember. 
he was my client first because I was still studying physio and I wanted to build up my business. He was my client first. And your problem was fitness. More than anything else, your problem was fitness. And I was fit. I'm telling you that, Birdie, want you to get this guy, this specimen six foot six guy, quick fit. I was like, cool, say no more. <laughs> Remember them ones there, across, there, across? You used to hate oh, them. Bro. <laughs> You're like, please, no, please, no. All of that. Nah, 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 nah. And then you used to do splints and then they change the direction. But yeah, that's how I uh, met Patrick, aka Van Dyke. It's a great love story. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> tell me if you had any mentors. Um I thought I did at the time Tony was. I thought I did with him, but his approach was one size fits all. To see him, do you get what I'm trying to say? It's like you're giving like a, a a program for the whole team rather than giving a personalized program for one particular person, one particular individual. I think his approach with me was like the same approach with everyone else, which didn't really work for me. Um, because he thought everyone had it easy or everyone had it the same in terms of upbringing, in terms of like support or finances and stuff like that really and people's circumstances where I feel like that's why I feel like yeah I had it generally speaking but I didn't really have it from a personal point of view Um, in terms of mental really and truly Not really, I'll be honest. And that's where I feel like sometimes I was ringing through life because I didn't know any better and nobody showed me any better, if that makes sense. Um, oh, it's one of them ones, really. Um, everything, everything is written. Everything happens the way it's meant to happen. So that's why I am the way I am and that's why... I wouldn't be where I am. It wouldn't happen the way it is. So you're from African family. And uh, as we know with the bias, uh, if you're from African family, you need to be a doctor. You need to be engineer. And uh, what's your advice to African kids that are getting this type of uh, demands from the parents that they need to do they need to do outstanding in school. They need to be a doctor or engineer. And uh, what they really want is to play football. What's your advice to, to kids like that? My advice is always seek knowledge. And that's, that's a given. Especially if you want to elevate your game and elevate your life, generally speaking. Always seek knowledge. And at the end of the day, you've got to respect them because you're living under their house, under their roof. So you're living under their privileges. So you have to respect that. And you have to, and then the least you can do is fulfill their request. Um. So obviously, and you, you need to understand, in order to get to academy, especially as a scholar, you need to pass the exams to get a scholar, especially in England. So, um, it's the bare minimum that you need to do anyway. And just think of it this way. When you seek knowledge and go through problems, your ability to think outside the box, think for yourself, and problem self will get better, generally speaking, when you seek knowledge um, and you go through these experiences um, in different realms, in different fields, whether it be biology, chemistry, maths, blah, blah, blah. You need to you need to have a a good well developed brain in order to 
get somewhere in life. Um, because like, if you have a low vocabulary or you don't know how to conduct yourself, blah, blah, blah. it doesn't look good though. It looks unprofessional. You're not gonna be, a, for example, like when James Man like, didn't know why he's like, a good professional. Bro, he speaks his kids Spanish. And his missus is not Spanish. My guy's sophisticated to the core. Do you know what I mean? And like the guy has multiple businesses. He has his own foundation charity. He knows how to run businesses. He knows how to um console and delegate tasks to other people. And he he can he knows how to network properly. He knows how to speak different languages. He knows how to like do you know what I mean? Handle his money, blah, blah. He knows who to just talk to to handle. Like, if you're like a dumb and you're in the streets and you're still in the hood, bro, like, like I said last week, bro, like, the standards that you accept is the outcome that you'll get. So, how you do one thing is how you do everything, guys. So, Expect high standards in your academics and you expect high standards in your football performance as well. I promise you. So, um, always do your diligence as much as possible and seek knowledge and then apply that knowledge to your experiences. Yeah, there is a quote from Da Vinci that uh, to, com- to acquire a complete mind, you need to study the art of science and science of art. So, like, essentially, you, you want to be the full package. You don't want to just have, I don't know, speak one language, go to the gym, but only do bodybuilding without trying other stuff like plyometrics. So, mm. like, uh, you need to you need to try different stuff and become uh, multi-directional as well. Uh, okay, next question is, uh, where did you get your knowledge from? Why are you so wise? Um, I was forced to get knowledge because I've never had any help. Does that make sense? Um, which in itself was a blessing and a curse. Blessing in a way I do everything independently. Curse because of being growing up, I never asked for help. Um, and that's and then many don't ask for help. You don't see a side of you where you you know well, you don't see a side of you where it has a big gap in your development or has a big gap in your uh, development. Do you know what I mean? Like um, an improvement. So if I, I feel like if I seek for help or had that guidance, people have told me, oh, by the way, when you do this, or that. and then I would have been like, oh, I didn't know that. Do you know what I mean? Um, but because I didn't know any better, or if anything, I didn't, I didn't know who to go to. Um, so I feel like that's where um, I had no choice but to constantly seek knowledge by myself and for myself. It sounds sad, like, but to know every everyone was, everyone just watches Netflix, YouTube, you know what I mean? I was just watching and reading. That's when people watch YouTube to cover comedy. I just watch overtime athletes. I watch, um, do you know what I mean? I just study the game and then I'm planning and then Ahmed boys are saying this to me, like, Ahmed goes to, Ahmed goes to his bed and dreams of playing metrics. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like Ahmed, the, the has um vivid dreams of putting cones down and drills, and I'm like, yeah, but that's what gets me going. Do you know what I mean? Um, but like, it, it, I've done, I've been doing this since I was like 13, 14 and it's been in game in my life. I'm always like, oh yeah, how can I improve this? How can I do this? How can I do that? Da, 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 da. How can I improve this? What supplements? How to this? What supplements? Oh yeah, this supplement helps with avoiding getting sick. Da, da, da. Oh, oh yeah, this, this and this. Oh yeah, how can I reverse cancer? How can I do this? How can I do that? Oh yeah, I was just looking things like 
even if it didn't apply to me, I was just learning and looking things because I didn't want to feel like insufficient because that's all I've ever felt like all my life because I didn't feel like I was good enough to anyone all my life, whether it be family or whether it be coaches saying you're not good enough or whether like me being a secondary citizen in this country because I'm always a foreigner. Do you know what I mean? Like I've always been in, insufficient to all the people. So I'm like, forget that, let it be sufficient for myself. Do you get what I'm trying to say? That's where the drive and the purpose came from. And to say what I mean by it, it's a double-ended sword why seeking knowledge. When you over seek knowledge too much, you don't go you don't experience life enough. And that's where my my problem came from. Um you'll only elevate as much as your knowledge application. And I feel like that's where I've been stuck the last few years. I've been seeking on the seeking on the reason on coaches S and C coaches, the physios. The manager, they're like, wow, you're the fittest I've ever seen. You're the most, you're, you're, the, you're so quick. You're like a championship speed type of thing. Blah, 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 blah. You're at this level. You're smashing numbers. I'm training with, like, shot me in with, like, Kevin Callagher, the goalkeeper of Liverpool. I'm training with these men in the gym. and not, like, Martin Kelly. I'm training with these men, shot me in. I'm investing in myself. And I'm saying, like, wow, like, why am I not? at that level football wise though well, that's because I don't play enough or I don't experience enough I don't do this I'm not for all these knowledge is but I'm not really applying it like you say oh, you need to look after yourself you need to rest a bit more you need to sleep more like I'm not applying these knowledges if that makes sense because I'm too busy seeking and I feel like um, your level of success in life will only be based on your the level of your self improvement and your level of self improvement will only be based on your knowledge application. And I feel I have acquired knowledge, but not applied knowledge enough because I've not experienced enough. And because I've not experienced enough, I've not gone through that pattern recognition phase enough times in the pit in the game or in life to know what to do. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Because I haven't got enough experiences. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But I feel like that's where it's a double-ended sword. Um, and it, is a, it can be a toxic relationship if you go to, to the extreme in, in either end. Mm. There is one, uh, one advice I heard from uh, one of the mentors I had. He said that I should uh, pair myself with knowledge. So like to read as much as possible, to watch videos as much as possible and to learn as much as possible from other people. And uh, to the fact that uh, people were saying that I watched every single YouTube video that was ever created because I was just watching all the time. And I think that essentially everyone should get through this phase, through the learning phase. But the difficult part is to put this knowledge into practice. So like, uh, I think this is what, what, uh, this is as exactly what Ahmed is doing now. He's, he's putting his knowledge out that he required for years. So uh, he's definitely worth listening to. Okay. We have uh, five minutes left. Three questions. Football hacks, plans for 2024, goals in life. Um, <clears throat> football hacks is no hacks. Simple as. My advice is going back to the knowledge things is when you acquire knowledge, acquire knowledge so much, you get to a point of chasing. And me and you by Patrick, we both know you can't be in the process if you're too busy chasing the outcome. And you're never gonna be in a state of abundance and a state of gratitude and a state of attraction and manifestation when you're too busy chasing and I feel like that's where really it stemmed from for me I was too busy chasing the level chasing the level chasing the level my advice to you guys let the level come to you and you'll find your level 
And it's an if coaches hear this, they'll be like, that's ironic coming from you. Like, do you know what I mean? Because I never did that. And that's where my biggest mistake came from. Because I'm seeing players that are playing on like St. Helens Leagues and stuff like that. And now they're playing Scottish Premier League. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, if I just stood, if I just like started in the trenches rather than chasing level, step three, step two, step one, lead two, chasing levels, you know, like 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, on board, whatever. If I just stayed there and got 40 games every year at a low level and then climbed up one level at a time, I'd be, started at 19, I'd be in a much, much better position than I am right now. I know that for a fact. Um, so I feel like that's what I should have done differently and, and what I would I would start to do differently now is I will just start really, really low and work my way back up. That's my goal for this season, just to get 45, 50 games and play every week in, week out and just go through that pattern, pattern recognition phase where I need to just make a lot of mistakes, a lot of failures at that low level, figure out what works and what doesn't for me based on my strengths and weaknesses and just go through it. Because you can play all these pickup games, you can play all these, go with these team trainings, but you're not playing 11 side matches and competitively and fighting for these three points, you're not going to get better. So I feel like that's my goal for 2024. And um, that's my best to hack for you guys. Just play as much as possible. Go where you're appreciated rather than tolerated. Don't go chasing let it come to you. That's not just for football, that's with jobs, that's with um, friendship, relationship, that's with everything. Go where you're appreciated and wanted, I promise you. As a man, you'd rather be adored than be the daughter. Uh, trust me, right? It's just, it's just go where you want it, honestly. That's my advice for you guys. And that's my plan for 2024. Goals for life. You want to write, uh, uh, write a book? You want to help some families in Africa? What's your goal? Yeah, um, Goals for Life is obviously I have my own business. Um, plays the highest level as much as possible. Represent for my national team, Somalia. Um, build hospital, build mosque, build wells. Increase humanitarian aid to places that need humanitarian aid. And... Um, be financially free by the age of 35. I said that to myself. I don't want to be working anymore after 35. That's my, that's, well, I'm retiring at 35. I can't do it anymore. So um, that's my goal. I'm looking to sell businesses and everything. 35 onwards and just manage from then on. Um, And then from then on, it's just, I'm just going to be the new Luke Belmar, do you know what I mean, type of thing. I'm going to be the new guy in the block. And then I'm just going to, but instead of being like, and it, did it. I'm just gonna be more just myself, you know what I mean? Um and just be me. I, because I've never seen a proper guy from a football background, true Muslim, there's this, there's that, do you know what I mean? I've never seen they're all like a bit messed up, low key, heavy deeper. Um like Luke Remar does I use guy and all that type of stuff. He's crazy in that regard. Andrew Tate, don't need to talk about him, everyone knows. Um, this will get censored. Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.